Hey guys, welcome to episode 8 of the Awesome Blossom Knits podcast. My name is Lauren, and as always, I'm coming to you from my home in Japan. Thank you so much for watching today, and a huge thank you to everyone who's subscribed to the channel so far. Um, I really appreciate it, and it's good to know I'm not just sitting here talking to myself like some kind of crazy person. So, yes, thank you. Um, let's go ahead and jump into knitting. I've got a couple of finished projects today, the first of which is this scarf that I made for my son. It's kind of hard to get it all in one frame here. So I showed this last week and I was still working on it. Um, the yarn is some acrylic yarn that I have had for a while. Um, there's loops and threads impeccable in true gray and royal and um, Vanna's Choice by Lion Brand in Silver Heather and Kelly Green. And I did not use a pattern for this. I just used size 10 needles, US size 10 needles. And I started, I think I started with this end and I did Judy's Magic Cast On and I cast on 15 stitches per needle and then just started knitting in the round. So it's a seamless tube. And then I knit and knit and knit and knit and knit and knit. And on this end, I just Kitchener stitched the end together. So both ends are closed up. Stocking it all the way around. And I'm really happy with it and my son likes it. So that's what's important, right? It looks way cuter on him, but you can see. It's long enough to go around once and then kind of tie into a knot. Since it is two layers thick and this is a heavy Aran weight yarns, I didn't think it was necessary to make it, you know, wrap around numerous times. I think it would actually be too hot if you were gonna wear it like that, so. And that is the scarf all finished. And my second project that I have finished this week is being modeled by this minion doll because I don't have a baby to put it on and it looks a little weird when I just hold it up by itself, but it's this little teddy bear bonnet. So let me show you, this is the back. Front. This I also knit out of Vanna's Choice by Lion Brand, the Vanna's Choice Baby, and the colorway is called Pink, Pink Poodle. Um, here's the yarn. This has been discontinued, I think a few years ago, actually. I just have a bunch of this stashed away still. They do still make the Lion brand of Vanna's Choice, I think, it's just this color that's been discontinued. So, I did use a pattern. I use, it was called Super Quick Baby Bonnet by Dillis Sutherland. And that first name is D-I-L-Y-S. I believe it's pronounced Dillis. Um, but I made some changes to it, so. Let's talk about that. Um, the pattern is written for worsted weight, but this, this yarn is really heavy. It's more like an Aran weight, so I did use larger needles. I think the original pattern calls for a size five on the ribbing and a size eight for the body of the hat. I could be mistaken about that, but I used a size eight and a size 10 needles and I cast on fewer stitches also because of my gauge difference. Um, and I was tr I was going for like a like a three to six month size. This is knit for a friend of mine who's having a baby next month, and I was wanting it to fit 
in maybe January, February. So when the baby's a few months old, when it's actually cold outside. And I think I got the sizing about right. I'm not sure, but um, it is a little bit bigger than what the pattern was written for. The pattern's only written in one size, and I think it's maybe like a zero to three month size. So, um, and it is a free pattern. You can search it on Ravelry, and then it'll take you to the designer's uh, blog or web page where she has the pattern posted. Um, Another change I made in the pattern, she has you knit the whole thing flat. So you start at the ribbing, knit the whole thing flat, including the decreases, and then you seam it in the back from the, the tip of the, the crown decreases to where you started the decreases. So there would be a seam here. Um, I decided instead of doing a seam to knit it flat, until I got to the point that I was going to start the decreases and then I joined it in the round and knit the the back portion of the hat, the crown, just knit it in the round instead of having to seam it up later. And I think that would I, I thought that would be better just so there wouldn't be a lumpy seam on the back of the baby's head. I thought it would be a little bit neater. So I'm happy with how that came out. Also the pattern, I don't I don't think it had any um, instructions for doing little ties, unless I just overlooked it, but I don't think there were any instructions on there. Um, I was going to do eye cords, but instead I just cut some lengths of yarn and looped it around the corner, corner there, and then just braided it. So I made these braided ties and then just tied them off on the end. Also the little teddy bear ear pom-poms were my addition, that's not in the pattern. Um, yeah. So I was gonna show you the pom-pom maker. I used this kind of pom-pom maker. Um, these are from Boy. Boy brand, B-O-Y-E. Should we be able to see? I'm pretty sure I bought these years ago at Michael's and it came with, in a set with three different sizes. Uh, you can see these little teeny tiny red ones. I used the middle size to make the pom-poms for the ears here. Yeah. I also have this type of pom-pom maker, which I actually prefer these ones from Clover, but I didn't have one small enough. I wanted little baby bear ears and these would have been too big. So I used the other, the other pom-pom makers instead. I was thinking about maybe doing a tutorial at some point, um, how to use different types of pom-pom makers. Cause I have these two types and I also um, have made pom-poms in the past just using pieces of cardboard. So I don't know if that's something anyone would be interested in, but it's something I was thinking about doing. Um, I think I mentioned this is for a friend who's due, her baby is due, baby girl, due next month in October. And I have another friend who is also due next month in October. She's having a baby boy. And those two friends are friends with each other. So I thought it would be cute to make them little matching baby bear hats. So. Sometime, probably this week, sometime in the next couple days, I'm planning on casting another one on. Same yarn, Vanna's Choice, uh, but this one, the color is sky blue. So, yeah, I'm gonna make it exactly the same, just different color. And, oh. The other thing I wanted to talk about is I, I did block this and the scarf. Um, I think there's kind of a misconception out there that you can't block acrylic or that it, it doesn't matter to block acrylic, but I do block acrylic projects. Um, I don't think that it does as much to 
even out your stitches and smooth things over as it, it does with wool, but it does make a difference. Um, and I do it the exact same way as I block wool. I just soak the project. I blocked this before I put the pom-poms on. So I soaked it um, in water with some wool wash. And I did use wool wash, even though this isn't wool, just because I have it and I think it's easier to rinse out than like regular laundry soap. So I, I did use wool wash and then I just lay it flat to dry. And I, I folded it in half and laid it on my blocking mats. And then this hat does have a, like it kind of curls under on the bottom side of the bonnet. So I pinned that down too, as it was drying to kind of uh, minimize the curling. And then once it was dry, I put the little ears on. And it does, it does smooth out the stitches. It does make a difference to block it. And I know there's other ways to block, block acrylic, like a, using like pinning it out and then using a steamer or the steam setting of an iron, but I've never done that personally. I always just soak it and then lay it out flat to dry. So the last project I have to share today is a pair of socks. And I'm still on the first sock. The yarn I'm using for this is uh, Red Heart Heart and Soul in the Razzle Dazzle colorway. Um, it says with aloe, Red Heart Heart and Soul with aloe. And the fiber content of this yarn is 70% superwash wool, 30% nylon. And as far as texture, it's pretty nice. It's a, uh, it's not as like kitten soft as as a merino sock yarn would be, but it's not scratchy either. It feels nice, um, and I like the colorway. It's really fun. I think I bought this off someone that was destashing on it on eBay, if I remember correctly. I might have bought it just from someone straight off a of Ravelry, but I think I found it on eBay. Um, yeah, I cast on 64 stitches, which is my usual sock number when I'm making socks for myself, um, on size one needles or 2.25 millimeter, but they were actually coming out a little bit big. I was looking at them thinking, oh, these look kind of wide and I tried them on I was trying them on my foot and also comparing them to other socks that I've knit that fit me well and they were just a little bit big. So I decreased right here where this first uh, marker is down to 60 stitches and that's a better, that's more like my regular uh, size. So since I decreased and I had started them out with 60 four stitches and they were coming out bigger. I went ahead and made them tall, taller, because since they're wider up at the top, they fit uh, higher up on my calf better. So these are nice long socks. I think they'll be good to wear in like rain boots or something. Um, and then I did a fish lips kiss heel which I've mentioned a number of times on the podcast already, is a pattern by Socks Therapist on Ravelry. And I knit the heel out of a contrasting yarn. I used some Patton's Croy in the Gentry Gray color that's left over from another pair of socks that I knit. And that's pretty much it. They're just vanilla socks, plain old stockinette which I don't knit a lot of these days. Um, I tend to prefer textured socks, socks with a pattern, but this yarn was so busy, I just thought that it would be too much. Any kind of pattern would just get lost. So I decided to just stick with vanilla here. And I gotta say, I was getting a little bored, like right in here before I got to the heel. But after I turned the heel, I've kind of picked up steam again, because. 
I, I know there's not too much longer before I finish the sock, so. And it's kind of nice to just work on plain stockinette, just knitting round and round and round. Um, so yeah, that's my Razzle Dazzle socks. So that is all the knitting I have for you today. I will, in the description box down below, I'll put um, some brief show notes as well as my Instagram usernames, if you want to find me there, I'll put a link to my Etsy shop where I sell hand dyed yarn and occasionally project bags. And I'll also put my, uh, my Ravelry username in the description box below. Um, I do keep project pages for all my projects on Ravelry. So if I ever forget to mention something like needle size or if you didn't catch the name of a pattern or anything like that, any changes I make to patterns, I usually put notes about that in the project page. Um, I have not updated my project pages for my most recent projects yet, but I'm going to try and do that later today. So you can always check there for more information on stuff. Um, all right, until next time. Thank you guys. Bye.